Morning, son. Eric here. Today, we are going to be exploring China's poverty alleviation program and whether or not it was effective. So, in this research paper, it is described as the 8 to 7 plan, which is a program that ran from 1994 to 2000. It cost the government about 5 to 7 percent of their annual expenditures and it covered 592 counties in China. It was aimed to reduce poverty in these specific locations. Now, the author in this paper uses a difference in differences approach to determine whether or not this program was effective or not. You're not going to understand all these variables or terms in this equation here, but what you need to understand is that the approach was used because it compares how much a group has changed over a period of time in respect to a certain outcome, rather than comparing the two outcomes directly after the treatment. And this is very important. For example, in China, poverty is closely linked to geography. You see in this visual that the majority of the impoverished counties are rural and inland. However, even amongst these counties, there may be pre-existing differences that can alter the effectiveness of the program. For example, one of these counties may be experiencing adverse shocks to their economy, which would downplay the effectiveness of the poverty alleviation program. Now, the author also uses regression discontinuity, which allows us to estimate the causal effects of the poverty alleviation program. And this is because the assignment of which county received this program treatment was not random. Instead, they use an indicator of whether or not the county's rural income per capita was below the poverty line or not. And this data was collected by the Ministry of Agriculture over a 15 year period on every single Chinese county. In the data included the rural net income per capita, and that was compared to the established poverty line, which at the time was under 700 yuan. I'm sorry if I did not pronounce that right. Now the eight to seven plan was implemented using a three-pronged method. First, the central banks dispersed loans to rural enterprises and then later focused on rural households. Second, the Ministry of Finance gave grants for investments in poor countries. And third, the government established publicly employed projects that improved construction and basic infrastructure in these counties, which ultimately led to short-term jobs. Now, the difference in differences results suggests that the program was helpful to poor counties. And over the decade, the designated poor counties that had received treatment saw an 80% gain in rural income capita. Now, the regression discontinuity results actually even show that the program was more significant and had a much more positive impact than the difference in differences approach. The, the coefficient of 0.384 in this column here shows that the program raised rural income per capita by 38.4%. However, it's important to note that these findings suggest that this program, this 8 to 7 plan, only had a spurt of growth in the short term. And once the program was over, there was a decay in growth. Now, why is this evaluation important? Well, this finding has very important policy implications because China's success against poverty ultimately leads to a decline in global poverty, considering how big they are as a country. And secondly, the rest of the developing world can learn from China's efforts in this poverty reduction program. Um, they are able to model uh, future programs after this, and they can see what works and what doesn't work, and hopefully replicate that or even modify it and go past what China has done.